Hey everyone, so today I have a speed reviews video. I wanted to update you on a lot of new products I've been testing out from Sephora. So I picked some of these products up during the Sephora VIB sale, which I guess was back in April at this point. So it's been a little while. And then I also have some brand new launches I'm excited to share as well. So because I have 15 products, I thought I would do it ranking style. Sometimes I have way more and it's just hard to rank them, but I thought 15 was a pretty good number. So I'm going to start with number 15, which was the worst product I tried and work my way up to number one. I will say there were some really good products. So like the top five are all amazing. And I really think they'll be some of the best launches of the year. But there were also a lot of products that kind of fell in the middle. Like I thought they were good, but not necessarily worth the price tag. And I definitely won't run out and repurchase them. And then one really bad product, which we'll start with. So let's kick it off with number 15. I'm actually so sad to rank this at number 15 because I love this brand. Every single product I've tried from them has been amazing. And a lot of the time I don't even have anything bad to say about the products. Like there are no cons to some of their products. But I want to be honest and let you know this product really didn't work for me. This is the LYS Lash Confidence Mascara. First of all, I feel like the wand is a little bit too big. This is definitely personal preference, but I prefer a slightly smaller wand because I find that when the wand is too big, I have a hard time really applying the mascara. Also, the packaging is triangular, which is super cute. I love the fact that they kind of stuck with their triangular theme, but because the wand is curved, you really have to apply it to the lashes a very specific way. And I just find that it doesn't really line up with the triangular packaging. Like I wanna hold it like this, but when I do, I have to like twist my arm a weird way. It's just a strange feeling as I'm applying it. I feel like that's so nitpicky, but it just comes to my mind every single time I use it. Even if that was the case and the formula was good, I would definitely still love it and recommend it, but I just don't find that it does anything for my lashes. It's really hard to build up. It looks so subtle on my lashes. And I think this claims to like, lift the lashes, add volume, add length, and I just didn't experience any of that from this mascara. So unfortunately, I just don't recommend this one. If you're looking for another good mascara, I really like the Amico Light one. I think that one does a great job adding a ton of volume, a lot of length. And right now my favorite from, from Sephora, I almost said Ulta, from Sephora is the Tower 28 Make Waves. That's the one I'm wearing today. I feel like it does a great job of actually lifting my lashes and adding a ton of length. And number 14, I actually have a body lotion. I don't buy a ton of high-end body lotions or body butters. There are some that I've tried that I really love, like um, Waze is really nice. I especially just love the fragrance of that one. I also tried the Josie Moran one, which is really great, but typically I just stick with more affordable options. But I got this as a sample or a deluxe size sample in a Sephora favorite set. And I've heard so many people rave about the brand Necessaire. I don't know if they rave about this product specifically, just the brand in general. So I was definitely curious to try it out. It's fine. Like it applies nicely. It sinks in quickly. I do like the fact that it's fragrance free because sometimes you don't want a really intense smelling body lotion. Sometimes you do, but just kind of depends on the day or what perfume I'm wearing. So I like the fact that it is fragrance free. My skin doesn't feel greasy when I use it, but it's just kind of underwhelming. I applied it last night before bed because I was like, I'll wear it one more time before filming this video and my skin was just kind of dry when I woke up this morning. It doesn't dry my skin out, but it just doesn't provide like that long-term hydration that I usually look for in a body lotion. I do think for the price point, I'd rather stick with something that's a little bit more effective. If you're looking for like a really good body lotion, if you have dry skin like me, I do recommend the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. That's a little bit more expensive, but I usually wait for like the Sephora VIB sale to repurchase it. And number 13, I have a product from Buxom. I love Buxom lip glosses so much. They are so beautiful on the lips. And I do think they actually work to plump up the lips and just give your lips like the most beautiful, smooth, glossy finish. So Buxom actually launched a plumping lip liner. I feel like maybe these have been around for a little while. I got these in the mail as PR and I thought I would try them out because I do, or I've noticed a lot of brands are doing plumping lip liners these days. And because Buxom does plumping lip products well, I thought these might work. The issue with plumping lip liners, in my experience, is they don't actually plump the lips. They might give your lips like a very smooth appearance, which in turn makes them look a little bit more full, but you don't get the plumping effect you usually get from a lip gloss. Anyway, this lip liner formula is nice. It's very creamy. It just goes on really nicely. It almost has like a little bit of a balm-like effect to it as it goes on. And once it dries down, it does stay in place well. I like the actual tip of this because it is triangular shaped. And I almost prefer that when it comes to lip liner because it's easy to define the cupid's bow. 
and, you know, outline your lips and then fill them in. But again, there's no plumping effect at all. It's a $21 lip liner. Usually I don't recommend a lot of high-end lip liners unless they are exceptional because there are just a ton of options under $10, even under five. So I just think for the price point, it's not special enough for me to say like run out and buy this. And number 12, I have a lipstick from Gwen Stefani's line. I've actually heard pretty good things about her line in general. And if I was purchasing a lipstick, I probably would have gone with one of the reds just because that is her signature color. But again, Again, I got this as part of that Sephora favorite set. So this is the Anaheim Shine, Anaheim Shine lipstick in the shade Stomp Box. Actually, this color kind of surprised me because it's not a shade that I would typically pick out for myself. I don't know what it is about pink tones. I sometimes stay away from them, but I will say this is really pretty on the lips. It's a nice formula. It definitely has a shine to it. It's not the most opaque lipstick I've tried, so I do think it is probably something you could like apply a light layer of and then blend in with your finger if you don't want something too, too intense, or you could build it up to look a little bit more vibrant on the lips. But again, I probably would have gone with one of the red tones, but I think this is a nice shade on days where I want a pink, but I don't want anything like too over the top. The reason it's ranked a little bit lower on my list is because it is a $26 lipstick and I will pay $26 for a lip product that I absolutely love, but I do think there are drugstore alternatives that are comparable. The new L or the newer e.l.f. O Face Satin Lipsticks are very, very similar to this. I almost like them a little bit better. I would say they're more pigmented for sure, but they're just as comfortable and they're probably a little bit longer lasting. So I feel like because there is an option out there that's $9 that performs even a little bit better in my opinion, I probably wouldn't run out and repurchase additional shades, but it is a really good formula. If you prefer to shop at Sephora or you really wanna try Gwen Stefani's brand, I don't think you'll be disappointed by the quality of this at all. So at number 11, I have a new product from Milk Makeup. This is their Kush Brow Shadow Stick. This is a really interesting product. I don't think I've seen anything like this from other brands. I've definitely seen products that are kind of marketed as like eyebrow pomades in a pencil, but typically the brow shape is a little bit different. So this one is almost like a flat circle, kind of like what you would see as like a lipstick almost or an eyeshadow crayon. So I don't think this is going to be for everyone by any means. If you have very, very thin brows, this might be a little bit too big for you just based on the packaging. You could probably turn it on its side, but I don't know. There are so many other brow pencils that are a little bit more precise that would probably be probably be more ideal. But they basically market this as like a buildable but also pigmented waterproof pomade in a crayon that you can throw in your brows and get like a soft but bold look for up to 12 hours. So it has some intense claims and I will say it lives up to those claims. I tried using this the other day and it was kind of like trial and error because my brows are I know I always say this, but they're very, very sparse. So if you have really thin, sparse brows like me, this might not be the most ideal option, unless you are looking for something quick and easy, because basically if you just like fill in your brows with like one swipe or kind of like some lighter strokes, you can get color, but it's not going to give you definition. It's almost more of like a soft diffused look. And then of course you can use the brush to kind of comb through. I'm definitely more of a brow pen fan because I do like a super defined look, but I would say if you have thick brows and you're just looking to add some color, or maybe you have like a few areas that are really sparse and you don't necessarily need to go in with a precise brow pencil and you just want something quick and easy, this could be a really good solution. It definitely stays in place well. And I feel like there's a place for in my collection, but it's not like my most ideal type of brow pencil. And I don't think it will be for a lot of people. I think a lot of people do prefer like a traditional brow pencil or a super tiny brow pencil or a brow pen. And this one is just very, very thick. So I think it's going to appeal to people who already have thick brows and just want something they can quickly swipe on. Number 10 is another skincare product. This is a moisturizer from Glow Recipe. It's their Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. So I've tried a couple of products from Glow Recipe. I do love their Watermelon Glow Moisturizer, but a lot of their products are very strongly scented. It's been a little while since I've tried some of their skincare products, so I don't know if they've cut back on that as a whole, or if there are some that are just less intense than others. This one is not quite as strongly scented I mean, it's not even close to as strongly scented as the Watermelon Glow Moisturizer. It has like a barely bare kind of berry scent. It's super, super subtle. So it's not something I really notice at all as I'm applying the product to my skin. Anyway, this is refillable now. I think they've been doing that with some of their products, which is nice to see. The original is $39 and then the refill is $33. This is like a gel cream type moisturizer, which is one of my favorite 
textures when it comes to a moisturizer, especially during the summer. I just find that it sinks in so nicely. And if you have oily skin, gel creams are the best because they're not too heavy, but they also provide a lot of moisture. A tiny bit of this product goes such a long way. Like I barely have to use any of it. So I do feel like this moisturizer will last me a really long time. This does give your skin a gorgeous, like dewy, radiant glow, but it's not over the top. It's a little bit more subtle, but it's really pretty. So this is great on its own with just like SPF on top, but it's also nice under makeup. It's not too heavy, so it doesn't feel like I'm wearing like an intense, thick moisturizer under my makeup but my skin is still left feeling really hydrated. So I do really enjoy this. I think it is a great option if you want something a little bit lighter. By the way, the top 10 products are all products I love. That was number 10. 10 through five are products that I really enjoy, but I probably have other products in my collection I could use if I was to lose them or use them up completely. And then five through one, are my absolute staples, like things that really stood out to me that I would run out and repurchase right away. So at number nine, I have a lip liner from Rare Beauty. This is the Kind Words Matter Matte Lip Liner, and I got the shade Talented. I heard so many people raving about these lip liners, and I purchased it when I saw, I think Juicy Jazz talk about it in one of her recent videos. I've heard her talk about it before, but I'm glad I grabbed it. It's a really beautiful formula. And again, I don't typically buy a ton of high-end lip liners, but this one is 15, so it's a lot less expensive than other options. And I got it during the VIB sale. So I got a little bit of a discount too. This is a really nice formula. It definitely glides on so beautifully and it has good pigment. Like some products that are so creamy almost disappear on my lips, but that's not the case with this one. It wears really nicely throughout the day. I love the packaging. Like the fact that it has this twist up is just a nice feature. I was doing my makeup this morning and I was looking for like a pink toned lip liner and I opened three of them and all three of them needed to be sharpened. And sometimes when you're in a hurry, like I don't know about you, but my lips are like the last thing I do. So it's usually when I'm running out the door that I'm applying my lip product. I just can't be bothered to like sit there and sharpen it. I know it only takes a few seconds, but the fact that this one is retractable, is just a nice touch. It looks luxurious. It feels feels nice on the lips and I really do enjoy it. I don't know that I'll run out and buy like a ton of them, but I wanted to choose a shade I knew I would wear a lot and Talented really is like my perfect go-to warmer nude. So I've been using this a ton. Number eight and number seven are both from Glow Recipe as well. So it took me a little while to try this out. Glow Recipe did send me a couple of products. So again, I got this in the mail as PR, but I just tried it out fairly recently and I'm so glad I did because I feel like this is the cleanser my skin has needed. It's the Avocado Ceramide Moisture Moisture Barrier Cleanser. My skin was kind of all over the place for a little while and it was dry and it was sensitive, but it was also oily. And I just felt like, I don't know if it was the combination of products I was using or the time of year, but something just felt off with my skin. Anyway, I've been using this cleanser lately and it's so nice. If you have sensitive skin like me, just like very easily irritated red skin, I think you'll enjoy this because it leaves my skin feeling very calm. When I initially opened this, the product kind of poured out quickly. Like it's a very thin texture kind of runny. So I was like, I don't know if I'm going to love that. But then once you add water and kind of lather it up and apply it to the skin, it is so smooth. It feels really, really good. It's like the perfect texture, not too thin, not too thick. And again, once I rinse it off, my skin feels really moisturized, both initially, but also long-term. And then it also feels very calm and it's just very gentle on the skin. Okay, and then number seven is something that I tried out on camera for the first time. It's the Plum Plum Hyaluronic Gloss Balm. When I initially tried this, I was kind of surprised because I thought the texture was going to be a little bit different than it actually is. It is a pretty solid product in here, and then when you apply it to the lips, it really melts nicely onto the lips. I was using this in the morning before I was doing my makeup, and it did leave my lips feeling incredibly soft, like very, very moisturized, but I think it also could be a good option if you wanna use it at night. Sometimes I'll apply it at night before bed and in the morning when I wake up, my lips still feel very, very moisturized. Like the product is still on there. So this truly is like a very hydrating product and the benefits are very long lasting. If I'm using it in the morning while I'm doing my makeup, I do notice that like sometimes the foundation around my lips wears off so fast, like right here and then right here because the product does kind of move around and it is a little bit of like an oily texture. So it's not really ideal once I have makeup on because I do feel like it just kind of erases all of the makeup in that area. And sometimes if I apply, like if I take it off and apply a lip product on top, my lips are so smooth that the lip product kind of like travels outside my lip line. So kind of a weird observation, but I do think this is maybe more ideal 
at night as like an overnight lip treatment. But I've been surprised by how much I like this. I do wish it had like a stronger scent. Again, if you guys use a lot of Glow Recipe products, is this a change within the brand or are some of their products just super intense and some are more subtle? Because I really like wanted to open it and get like a nice plum or berry scent. And I just, it doesn't really have that. It's so subtle, but I think that could be more ideal for people who are sensitive to fragrance, but I've really been enjoying this. Number six is actually a primer from KVD Beauty. This is their pore refining primer. Anytime something claims to be like pore blurring, pore smoothing, I automatically kind of lower my expectations a little bit because usually those products are very slick feeling and they do work well to blur the skin, but my foundation usually just does not wear well on top of them. So I, when I tried this, I feel like my expectations were a little bit lower and I've been so shocked by how much I've loved it because it, it is a very smoothing product, but my foundation really does look so beautiful when I wear this on top and I feel like it wears well throughout the day as well. So it definitely provides hydration, that nice smooth factor. Like if you have large pores or a lot of texture on your skin, it really does give you that blurred appearance, but foundation still stays in place well. So if you have that issue too, like with those pore blurring primers or those smoothing primers, definitely try this out. I think you'll be shocked by how much you like it. At number five, I have a liquid liner. It's been a long time since I've felt so passionately about a liquid liner. Urban Decay's Perversion has been my favorite for years and years. And then I tried this one from Danessa Myricks fairly recently. It is the Line Work Liner, Line Work Paintbrush Fluid Eyeliner in the shade Onyx. It's very Thin. Like the actual brush tip tapers off to a really thin, precise point. So I do think that is really nice because you can create a very thin wing. My issue with liquid liner is before I know it, I have like the most intense, thick winged liner. And sometimes I want something a little bit more subtle. I wear liquid liner on camera a lot because usually when I'm filming, I have like a little extra time to sit down and do my makeup and play with products. So I like going like a little more full glam. But day to day, I don't wear a ton of liquid liner because I feel like, again, it always just ends up looking so dramatic. But this has kind of changed the game for me because it does... I'm able to create like a little bit of a thinner, more precise line, but it's still so dark and dramatic. I also think this one is like the most long wearing eyeliner that I've tried in years. It really is smudge proof. It's basically waterproof. I feel like it's hard to find like a true waterproof liquid liner, but if you have very watery eyes, it's not going to come off in like the corner or the inner corner. I'm really impressed by this. I think it is so gorgeous and I'll definitely continue to repurchase it. And number four, I have the new Natasha Denona Yucca palette. This is a really gorgeous gorgeous palette. I did do a video trying this out on camera for the first time, as well as a lot of these products. So I'll link some related videos in the description if you want to see them in action. But I've worn this in a couple of videos. So I'll include some close up or some clips of what this looks like on the eyes because I've done a few different looks. I'm also wearing it today. So I have this color and then a little bit of this color blended into the crease kind of up as like a transition shade. I have this in the outer corner and the crease to darken things up and then this all over the lid. On the lower lash line, I kind of have like a combination of those colors and then I just put like a green eyeliner on the waterline. I'll do some close up swatches for you so you can really see what they look like, including the textures of these. I think the sparkling foiled shadows are so gorgeous. I think they're newer to her palettes. I'm not like I love Natasha Denona, but I don't know everything about the brand and like her finishes. But I do think I heard that there are some new sparkling metallics in here. They're so beautiful. I thought they were going to be a little bit gritty and kind of create a ton of fallout as you apply them to the eyes, but that's not the case. They have this really gorgeous, smooth finish and they look really intense on the eyes, like that liquid metal look. So I cannot get enough of those. I think they're so stunning. I hope she includes those in future palettes as well because I've always loved like her shimmers, her metallics, but these are like next level gorgeous. I don't have any issue with any of the shimmers. There are a few mattes in here that end up looking just slightly patchy on the eyes. Some of the mattes are like the best mattes I've ever tried, usually the deeper shades, but some of those like mid-toned, grungy, yellowy, taupey shades end up looking a little bit patchy on my eyes. It's nothing outrageous. They're definitely still shades I end up going in with, but I might take like a little bit of like a brow bone shade to kind of work on diffusing it a little bit more. But that is something I want to mention. Overall, I think the palette is so stunning and just really interesting. This is a color story you're either going to love or hate. I know a ton of people don't like this color story, but a ton of people do. So I think if this color story appeals to you, if you like something a little bit different than like your typical neutral palette, you might really enjoy having this in your collection, especially if you don't own anything like this already. I've been able to get a lot of use out of it, and I do think it will be 
Not necessarily like my most worn Natasha Denona palette, but definitely one of my favorites because it is so different than anything else I own. Number three is this blush from Makeup by Mario. I love this blush so much. Like the first time I tried it out was on camera and I just, I fell in love with it. And I feel like I love it even more now than I did when I initially tried it because when I tried it out in that video, I did have like a full face of makeup on. And I don't know if I tried it over powder because they do say you can wear it over powder, but I found that the best way to apply it is like directly on top of foundation or any other creams before going in with powder. But either way, this is such a gorgeous formula. It's the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil. I have the shade Barely Blushing. It's so dewy, so glowy, just very, very healthy looking on the skin. And I think the issue with a lot of cream blushes for me is they can be really intense. And that can be great if that's what you're going for, but it's almost a little bit more difficult to find like a subtle cream blush. This one has a very thin, I, I wanna say like almost, serum-like glow to it. You know when you wear foundations or base products that are marketed as like serum type products, how they just have like that gorgeous glow? That's what this has. Almost like a liquid blush would give, but I love the fact that it is like a true cream because it's very easy to apply. Even though I'm ranking this a little bit higher, there are some potential cons that I wanted to mention. So this, like I said, can look a little bit patchy if you're wearing it on top of powder. I watched a video on Instagram from Mario specifically saying like you could layer this over powder. It works well on creams, on foundation, on liquids, and on powder. I really wouldn't layer this over powder, like even a light layer of powder, because when I do that, it ends up looking kind of patchy and it lifts the product underneath. So the way that I like to wear this is just like directly over my foundation and bronzer before going in with powder. And then I might lightly powder the area, but sometimes I'll skip it because if you do powder, you're going to lose a lot of that glow. The second thing is this is not like the most long wearing blush I've ever tried. Not like the Makeup by Mario sticks, like the bronzer sticks, the blush sticks, those stay in place all day. This one will fade and kind of wear off by the end of the day, but because it is so natural on the skin, it's not really something I mind. Like I don't wear this on days where I want like a heavy blush look. I just wear it on days where I want something a little bit softer, really natural and pretty. So for me, it's perfect for those days and it really is a gorgeous formula, but it might have a few potential cons if those are things that you don't like when it comes to your blushes, but it's gorgeous. I definitely want to grab another shade. Number two is this gorgeous powder from the brand Amicole. This is so pretty on the skin and it was one of the last products I tried from my Sephora VIB sale haul and I don't know why. I wish I tried it sooner because it is so gorgeous. It's the Skin Melt Loose Powder. I have the shade Translucent, but there are some additional shades as well. It's $22, so it's fairly affordable for Sephora, and I've loved everything I've tried from the brand. I also like their mascara, their lip oil, but I think this might be my favorite product. It just looks incredibly smooth on the skin. It's probably the smoothest looking powder I've ever tried. It's very lightweight, very, very finely milled, so it doesn't feel like you're wearing a heavy powder on the skin. For reference, another one of my favorite powders lately has been the Huda Beauty one, but that one just feels a little bit heavier. It's a little bit thicker. It's kind of ideal if you want to bake the skin, and it is more mattifying. This one's kind of the opposite because it's so lightweight. The texture is kind of similar to like the Hourglass powder, but I feel like this one is so much much better. It actually provides the most smooth blurred finish. I love using it under the eyes to set my concealer because it is so lightweight. It doesn't feel like I'm adding a lot of texture to the skin. And I like using it with like a triangular velour puff to set like the center of my face because it just erases any texture. I think this will be my favorite powder for like the majority of the year. I don't think it's going to be the most ideal in like July and August when it's very hot outside and my skin is extremely oily because I'll probably want something a little more mattified and long wearing, but this is just so beautiful. Like the prettiest powder I've tried in such a long time. And I feel like if you have dry skin or combo skin or normal skin, you'll love this product. If you need something intensely matte, I probably wouldn't recommend it, but I don't usually go for such an intense matte powder day to day most of the year with the exception of like the really hot months. So I'm impressed by this. It's so stunning. I love it. The number one product I wanted to share in today's video is amazing. I know everyone seems to be talking about this product and I do think it's completely worth the hype. It's the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. This looks amazing on the skin. I'm wearing this under my eyes, kind of between my brows and my forehead and my chin with this powder. Like this is the best combo. They just look 
perfect together. And I feel like if you have fine lines or texture or your makeup tends to crease and settle, these products together are going to be amazing. This looks so just pretty and perfect on the skin. It has really good coverage and a little bit of this product goes such a long way. Sometimes full coverage concealers or heavier coverage concealers can look cakey on the skin. This one really doesn't. It blends and melts into the skin in a really natural way. And I do find that it wears well throughout the day too. It's not completely creaseless. Like a lot of people are saying this does not crease on them at all and it claims to not crease, but I do have a lot of fine lines under my eyes and every concealer will crease, but I do find that this one almost creases a little bit faster than other concealers. But if I set it with the right powder and set it like right away, like I actually have to like tap the creases out and then immediately go in with powder, then it's fine. And this powder is great, but I've tried other powders that are great too. But I will say if you're expecting like a true creaseless concealer, this isn't it. I'm actually so impressed by this though. Like it really is my perfect concealer and I haven't been able to stop using it. I think it is such a high quality product worth every penny. And because a little bit goes a long way. I just can't imagine I'll go through this quickly. Even if I use this as like a spot concealer and then set it with powder and skip foundation, I only have to use as much as come as much product as is on the wand. I feel like I said that in a weird way. I don't have to dip back into the tube multiple times to spot conceal my whole face. Like this is the only amount of product I'll use. So if they launch a foundation like this, which I feel like they have to be working on that. Usually brands do launch like concealers and foundations with similar names or from a similar line. If they launch a foundation like this, like I'll be the first one in line because this is so good. So those are all of the new products I've tested out from Sephora. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope this ranking style video was fun or helpful. Let me know if you guys liked it or if you just like them kind of all mixed together because I'll definitely take that into account when I film my next one. But I hope you have a great day and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.